Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for joining us today for Thoughts from the Next Generation, the Trail Apprentice Program, Career Interests and Barriers Experienced by Young Professionals. My name is Kara, I use she, her pronouns, and I'm the Program Coordinator at Partnership for the National Trail System, or PNTS, and I'll be serving as today's webinar moderator. For those of you who may not be familiar with PNTS, we are a small nonprofit that's a collective voice, a resource provider, and a hub for exchange, learning, and action for the National Trail System. As the only 501c3 nonprofit organization focused on the 30 National Scenic and Historic Trails, PNTS brings together professionals, leaders, and trail and hiking enthusiasts to promote a thriving, accessible, and inclusive National Trail System. Today, I'm speaking to you from the lands of the Onondaga and Haudenosaunee people. PNTS recognizes that land acknowledgements are an important first step in acknowledging that we are on stolen indigenous lands. There will soon be a link in the chat where you can explore what native lands you currently reside on. Please enter into, into the chat what lands you're joining us from, as well as introduce yourself and let us know what organization you're affiliated with. PNTS recognizes the need to commit further and engage in meaningful partnerships. PNTS is committed to working with indigenous people, organizations and communities and having indigenous people lead the way through initiatives such as our tribal consultation webinar series that just wrapped up. Our commitment proceeds into the future through projects such as the indigenous mapping and research project, which provides resources to help advance national trail system awareness and education of indigenous knowledge and stewardship. The webinar today is being recorded and will be available to everyone that registered following the live presentation. And the session today will go for about 60 minutes and we will have some time at the end for Q&A with our apprentices. Um, as we go, please put any questions or comments you have into the chat. Um, the format for today's webinar will be a panel discussion with PNTS's 2022 Trail Apprentices. Um, and real quickly, the PNTS Trail Apprentice Program provides scholarships to young leaders interested in a career in recreation, natural resource management, conservation, um, history, or related field, so that they can attend the PNTS National Trails Workshop and participate in career exploration, networking, and educational opportunities. Today, each of the apprentices will introduce themselves, um, discuss their experiences in the apprentice program, and discuss um, barriers uh, they or other young professionals have experienced um, when entering the environmental field. I will note that um, due to unforeseen circumstances, Maria Rodriguez will be unable to join us today, but we do have our other um, six wonderful apprentices here. And all right, first we will hear from Carly um, to kick us off. And Carly, um, please introduce yourself and share a bit about your background and career interests. Hi everyone, um, my name is Carly Toledo. I'm a member of the Navajo Nation and I am Edgewater Born for Mud. Um, I'm a staff member at the women-led indigenous organization Illuminated. Um, and my career interests involve getting involved in trail co-management with tribal nations and increasing co-stewardship efforts. Um, across public lands and including national parks and trails. Um, I'm calling from Pawtucket land in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and I really enjoy spending time in the outdoors. And I use she, her pronouns. Um, I'm gonna pass it on next to my next trail apprentice. Awesome, thanks Carly. Callum, do you wanna give us a quick introduction? Yep, hey y'all, um, I'm Callum Cintron. I use they them pronouns. I am currently living on the land of the Muncie Lenape in Northern New Jersey. Um, I just graduated this last week with studies in anthropology, natural resources. Um, and as I job hunt, I'm hoping to start a career path that not only focuses on preservation of cultural and natural resources, but also on creating inclusive and accessible outdoors um, as well as community-based indigenous-led preservation and conservation efforts. Um, and pretty much when I'm not doing this kind of work or studying, um, I mostly just hang out with my dogs um, and explore the nature up here in Northwest New Jersey. Awesome, thanks, Callum. Um, Paola, I'm gonna go to you next. Um, can you please introduce yourself and share a little bit about your background and any uh, career interests you have? Hi everyone, my name is Paola, she, her, or she, they pronoun, and I'm joining from Bakersfield, California. I am a, uh, I, I assist people of Kern County 
uh, with public assistance programs, CalFresh, um, or food stamps, and given uh, Medi-Cal to low-income uh, families. And uh, I also am on a project to bring back the Kern River, which is currently endangered. Uh, but I uh, am an aspiring environmental planner, and um, I like being in the outdoors, taking my dog on on, on long walks and uh, uh, going bird watching. Cool. Thanks, Paola. Um, Melissa, do you want to give us a quick introduction? Hi, everyone. It's really nice to see you guys. Um, if you guys are calling in and attended the national trails, nice to see you again. Um, and also for every, anyone who hasn't met us yet, it's really nice uh, to see you. And I hope we get to learn more about you guys and you get to learn from us. Um, I'm calling in from New York City, um, which was the original land of the Canarsie, Huapinger, and Munasi Lenape peoples. Um, and I'm just so thankful for the national trails for allowing me like that knowledge on how to use the native language and digital and the importance of it. Um, I am a natural trails apprentice and on like for my job, I am an educational specialist for um, a nonprofit organization that helps lower income youth um, gain um, job development skills. Um, and aside from that, I'm a, a, a graduate assistant um, for my graduate uh, program, um, which focuses on environmental sustainability and decision making. And for my job, I'm interested in environmental education. So I'm just excited to be here uh, and hear from all of us. <laughs> awesome. Thanks. Um, Mara, you're up next. Hi, um, my name is Mara Hanley. I use she her pronouns. I'm currently in Cross Plains, Wisconsin, which is right outside of Madison, Wisconsin. I'm the AmeriCorps VISTA Communication Support Specialist at the ICH Trail Alliance, which is the nonprofit in charge of the ICH National Scenic Trail. I think I actually have some coworkers that joined, so hopefully they don't heckle me too badly. Um, but I'm on the communications and marketing team at the Alliance, and I'm responsible for managing the social media pages and creating content for them. And then kind of my long-term career goals are, um, I would really like to be involved in the relationship building between um, nonprofit organizations and federal agencies and also um, Indigenous communities. Awesome, thanks. And Lisette, um, can you please introduce yourself and share a bit about your background? Um, yeah, hi everyone. My name's Lisette. I am a trail apprentice and some of my interests include environmental education, history, and really just being able to bring in more communities of color into the outdoors. I'm calling from Chicago, um, which I believe is the homelands of many different uh, groups, including the Potawatomi. Thanks, Lisa. Nice to see everyone. Awesome. Well, thank you all so much for your, your quick introductions. Um, and I'm gonna come back to Carly now um, to share anything about the Trail Apprentice Program. Um, why did you decide to take part in the program? Um, were your goals for the program met? Um, why or why not? Or anything else about the program you'd like to share? Thank you, Kara. Um, hi, everyone. Um, I guess we can get back to what my intentions were to join this program. So I found this program back in July, and I saw that there was um, in the application that there was a section that was like saying, like, we're trying to find like young indigenous voices to join this. And I was like, me. Um, and I am really, I love the great outdoors. I'm from Utah. I have, as I've gotten older, I've started to see how um, a love of nature can fuel like the pipeline of indigenous people to get into like activism and protecting lands and um, figuring, being like an advocate. And so for this program um, really caught my eye because it's tailored to young voices. Um, and specifically for people to have like their first exposure to what the trails world is like. Um, I studied political science, but I haven't necessarily gone into the outdoor um, like industry or like haven't done a whole lot with uh, land management. And so I saw this as a great opportunity for me to just like start to get my foot in the door to kind of hear from the people who have been out in these roles um, to see like really to also take 
like a survey to see like, okay, where's everything at? Where is the conversation around including indigenous people falling? What can I observe um, and see like where I can really push for change? Um, and so my goals for this program was one, just to like meet other native people and Shandine, shout out to you because I was able to meet you through this. Um, and it really has given me um, really great friendships. And that was like, a, I guess like an unexpected goal. I didn't realize I had, like I knew I wanted to make connections but being able to work with this cohort has really shown me um, that this was like, that's like a success for me. Um, something else that I had gone into, this is just like education to learn as much as I can. And everyone has been so willing to teach me everything especially at the conference where hearing from um, experts in the field. Um, so yeah, a lot of my goals were met and my motivations to join has already been uh, exceeded. Um, so I'm gonna pass it over to the next trail apprentice. Thanks, Carly. Uh, Callum, what about you? Um, why did you decide to take part in the program um, and were your goals and hopes for the program um, met? Yep, um, so this is actually my second year in the trail apprentice program. Um, I decided to take part last year um, partly because it was virtual and I was struggling to find natural resources experiences that were virtual. Um, but I also really wanted to kind of expand into a new field as I think intersectionality and interdisciplinary work is really important um, for making a difference in nature and um, cultural preservation and conservation. Um, both this year and last, my goals were to network and learn more about the trail sectors in general, but also specifically on diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, and that kind of stems from uh, a couple of years ago, I began having a disability that made me homebound and I lost my access to nature. Um, and I also thought I would lose my access to being able to work in natural resources of any type. Um, and this program really let me see that um, not only are there gonna be remote jobs in a lot of these uh, fields and organizations, but the people within the organizations and agencies and PNTS um, are really accepting and really passionate people and really wanna help people get into this field. Um, like I can really say my goals and hopes were definitely exceeded. Um, as I mentioned, I'm involved in as a second year trail apprentice as a peer leader, um, but I've also stayed on to volunteer with PNTS as a uh, part of the workshop host committee, volunteering with the Indigenous Mapping and Research Project, and I was appointed to the PNTS DEI committee. Awesome, thanks, Callum. We we absolutely love. Um, how much Callum has become involved after their, um, you know, involvement in the Trail Apprentice program. And we hope that, you know, all the, the current and future Trail Apprentices also have the opportunity to stay involved. All right, awesome. Um, Paola, what about you? Um, why did you decide to take part in the program and were your goals and hopes from the pro for the program met? So uh, my, my educational background is public administration. And so I, I'm a very dedicated public servant. I like to you know volunteer during the elections and I work for the county and um, I you know, wanna make sure that uh, the residents of where I live have access to uh, you know, public services and that includes uh, public lands. And so uh, what, and uh, I applied because I really wanted to explore the world of uh, natural resources and uh, the environment. And I was like, well, I don't know if I really can. Like, I, I don't really have a background in that. And I didn't grow up in uh, outdoor rec or, you know, um, I didn't grow up camping and doing all that. So I was kind of just like, I don't know if I belong here. And so, uh, you know, going to this conference and uh, meeting my peers and seeing that they also come from different backgrounds and also have an interest in pursuing a field in, in the environment. Um, and uh, one of my goals for uh, when we were at the conference was to really push myself to network. Um, and my, my, my roommate was Melissa. And I, I told Melissa, I was like, hey, I want you to keep me accountable 
and uh, you know, I, I really want to talk to at least two people today. So hold me to that. And you know, I I, I met my goal. I, I talked to like five people, and so um, I'm really, you know, I feel very supported from this program, and uh, it gives me the confidence to continue pursuing these interests. So I think uh, I this program met my expectations beyond that. <laughs> so uh, being able to uh, take this experience and shape it into something bigger and uh, be able to um, also take the knowledge I gained from the conference. And, um, you know, um, uh, I have started one of the books that was mentioned, uh, Braiding uh, Sweetgrass. Uh, I picked up from my library and I've started to uh, gain a little more knowledge on um, indigenous uh, uh, scientific knowledge and also how you know, we gotta we gotta listen to all voices. So, um, yeah, I, I have I answered all. So, was there a second part of that question? Yeah, no, that's great. Oh, okay. Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah. All right, Melissa. Uh, what about you? Um, why did you decide to take part in the program? Um, and where your your goals met for the program? Yeah, so I decided to join the um, National Trails Partnership because I had no knowledge on what National Trails were. Um, I grew up in New York City, and although we have some green spaces, like we were not we're not near um, National Trails. Um, and the closest that I've gotten to like hiking was through my high school, um, which they took us upstate um, to go hiking and. I decided to join the National Trails because I was interested in one, learning more and bringing that knowledge back to my kids that I teach in the nonprofit um, company that I work for, um, because a lot of them also have not had experiences with National Trails or at least with the environment, like more like getting in touch with the environment. I'm sorry, my phone rang. <laughs> um, and uh, it was a really enlightening experience because I was humbled that I was in a space that I wasn't too familiar with, but I still had the passion and drive to learn more because it was um, regarding issues that were important to me, which was accessibility to students of lower income like myself um, to have that opportunity. And I wanted to learn more about project management because after the trail conference, like I realized that I wasn't aware of different um, programs in New York City that allowed kids to have access to national trails. And if there's a space where I can like help connect that bridge to students in my community, then that was a goal that I was um, aiming to strive to do at least. It, it's not the job that I want, but it's something that I wanna do on the side because it means a lot to me that kids have access to these resources. Um, and I have met my goal because um, through the webinars and through networking at the conference, I met people and different organizations that can help build that gap. Um, so I'm really excited and I was just happy to learn like Paola said about different ways that we can educate our, ourselves about like indigenous um, uh, influences on the trail system and how like issues of diversity within the trails those are things that I'm really interested in um, and uh, like Paola also said like I read up oh my god sorry I don't know why this is ringing a lot um like Paola said I also read a book um, called decolonizing methodologies that was um, talked about in one of, in the conference um, and I used it in one of my papers and it was really awesome because it helped me gain a new perspective I had the book before but I I was like is this a book like you know is it is it a how can I use this book and through the conference like it showed me a way on how I can navigate the literature that was being um, brought up and the topics that were being discussed in the that book so yes I did meet my goal <laughs> um, and I'm really thankful for everyone and I also thought it was important to acknowledge the the people who have helped me throughout that conference in my papers and um, allow them to um, be exposed to new sets of people who might not have known who these um, scholars were the indigenous scholars so thank you awesome thank you so much Melissa uh, Maura, you're up next. Um, why did you decide to take part in the program um, and were your goals and hopes for the program met? 
Um, yeah, so I heard about the program initially from the AmeriCorps Vista, who had my position previously, um, was actually a trail apprentice last year, and then also my supervisor told me about it, and they both really encouraged me to apply for it. Um, so I did, and then um, got lucky enough to be chosen. And then uh, a big, I think, reason I decided to participate was because um, we're currently working at a nonprofit partner for a National Scenic Trail. I thought it would be super advantageous to kind of be more immersed in the trails world and learn more about that. Um, and then also, it's just been really amazing to connect with other young people who are super passionate about environmental justice. Um, the other trail apprentices have like already accomplished like really awesome things. Um, and they're very inspirational. So I'm very like grateful that I was connected with all of them and got to hear about all the things that they're doing in like both their personal and professional lives. Um, and I think overall my goals were met. Um, I definitely, similar to everyone else, wanted to improve my networking skills and really focus on kind of making like meaningful, lasting professional connections, um, especially because my AmeriCorps service is only for a year and I'm already kind of like at that halfway mark. So it's been good to kind of, you know, just make some of those professional connections and even just like learn about other opportunities that are out there um, that can help me like stay connected and uh, with national trails after my position is up. Um, and then kind of like a more personal goal for me was just to improve my communication skills um, and be better at like advocating for myself in terms of, like both in professional and personal settings with like my passions and projects I want to pursue and also just like be better with um, accepting constructive criticism and work settings. Um, so that, I guess that goal kind of crosses both lines, but I think I've made like pretty good strides towards accomplishing both those goals. Um, and at the very least, I like to just connect with some really awesome people at the conference. Awesome, thank you for all that. Uh, Lisette, it's on to you. Um, can you let us know why you decided to take part in the Trail Apprentice program and were your goals and hopes for the program met? But yeah, um, the reason why I decided to apply, um, I told Kara actually, I don't remember applying, but I did remember seeing the program and just going diving into the, the work that people do and wanted to learn more um, and really network. I'm really big on networking, especially since I'm a kind of a recent graduate and still don't have a job. Um, so really learning our yeah, learning about the work that people do and even going up to them and asking like, hey, how did you get your job? And people really like to talk about themselves. I'm not trying to sound rude, but especially the work they do and everything. So that's really something I enjoyed. Um, the networking I saw as a big opportunity. So that's a big reason why I decided to go for it. And really knowing that there's young people who are being included in this work more and more, I feel like nowadays. Um, I always find it very rewarding when I meet people of my age who are also passionate and doing X, Y, and Z, and you know, just really have a just a lot of passion and goals. So that's a that was a really big thing as well. And did it meet my expectations? Yes, actually exceeded them because I learned so much and I didn't know what to expect, especially with the cohort. You know, you meet new people and you're like, how is this going to go? But it was really fun. I really had a good time talking to the, all the apprentices. And I really enjoyed my time with my roommate, Carly. Shout out to you. And yeah, I just learned so much. And it was really nice to partake in everything and all the sessions. Learned a lot about Indigenous voices and every all the work that's being done. So really exceeded my expectations as well. Thank you. Thanks, Lizette. All right, awesome. Um, I've got one more question for you all, and we'll start off with Carly. Um, what barriers have you seen for people who are getting involved with trails um, or young professionals looking to work in this field? And do you have any suggestions um, about how organizations could possibly overcome these barriers? Yeah, what a loaded question. 
Um, so through this work, I'm new to this field, and some of the barriers I have experienced myself is that there's a lot of institutional knowledge that people are trying to change in different ways, and where I come in, I'm unsure what positions I can fulfill to be able to, one, learn and understand that institutional knowledge, but also bring in a new perspective to change that institutional knowledge. And a great example of this is bringing in Indigenous voices into these federal agencies. Um, something I have seen is there is such a growing urge and desire to incorporate co-management and stewardship, and a lot of people don't know where to begin. Um, and I think that's one of the barriers that I see for Indigenous people to come into this field, because I know I come into this work having a huge desire to be able to change that. But just like you, I'm unsure of where I can do that. Because I'm a young professional, I don't have the, like, I'm not in the seats of decision making to be able to um, make those decisions. Like, I can't just say, land back, everyone. <laughs> but I can offer my voice and my um, observations of, like, here are, like, have we ever considered doing this? Or, like, looking into the working with these communities. Um, and so I think that's something um, just like as a general barrier. And then uh, more specifically for young professionals, it's uh, there's this barrier of like not understanding how we can fit into this work. And a way I think organizations could really do this is explaining why there is such a need for young professionals and saying, hey, instead of just um, a suggestion could be instead of just saying we're looking for like a coordinator or for someone for this it's kind of giving more context of like we're looking for this person to help through this position to help offer these changes or to be able to offer um, kind of giving more context of like why there is a need for professional young voices because right now if I go to USA jobs and I look at things I'm like <gasps> like do they want me as like a like a two year, like I came out of school in 2021. I was like, do they want me to fulfill all of these things? Because sometimes that language, the hiring language can be really intimidating to myself. And so either offering contextualizations on your personal websites or even in the description of like, here is how we envision a young professional fitting into this role um, could really help me. Uh, that's why this uh, program seemed so, I was willing to apply because there were very minimal things for me to fill out. And I had like a great, like literally it said, looking for indigenous voices, looking for young people. And I was like, okay, I felt confident that I could do that, which really helped me um, feel excited about applying to this role. Um, let's see, I guess, yeah, those are my big things. Um, and I'm going to leave it next to my trail apprentices to add their insight. Thank you so much, Carly, for that. Uh, Callum, what about you? What barriers have you seen for people um, trying to get involved with trails or other young professionals looking to get into this field? And do you have any suggestions for what organizations could do to help overcome these barriers? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, you will notice a theme with me is diversity, equity, inclusion. So my answer is about that, but... Um, I think that access inclusion and inclusion are major barriers to getting involved with trails as the more like covert issues. So those that are kind of um, not super seen um, in these areas are not known by trail organizations or even trail communities as those communities and organizations really com still comprise mostly of um, the privileged groups of people who are white, cisgendered, or non-disabled individuals. Um, and access and inclusion are very experience-based and they're not all encompassing. So those who have the current power to change trail involvement now might not know about more personal access needs, like how putting some type of bench or sitting area on a trail um, could be benefit somebody with mobility issues or the safety concerns that transgender or BIPOC people have in the outdoors. Um, and I think the main way organizations can really be, start to become over, overcome those um, general barriers is something that I also think should use, be used in all trails decision making, which is simply just talking to community members 
Um, so attending tabling events, outreach in K through 12 universities, partner with community-based organizations and start spending time generally with those people, um, not only showing up at events that revolve around what your organization does, but also events to support those communities. Um, and kind of just talk to people and just ask them, hey, what's the barrier? Um, it can be as simple as that, um, especially since a lot of um, research and stuff is still very colonial and white, um, so it doesn't get the true story um, and really adapt your programs to meet people where they are currently at and realize the privilege that your current programs and policies require for interaction. Um, and I think this also kind of goes over to the how to engage young professionals looking to get into the field. Uh, not everyone can do unpaid or all-paid internships. Not everyone can have three seasons of field work under their belt for an entry-level job. Um, and not everyone gets a chance to get a degree, but barriers like pay, education, and physical ability put up walls that risk trail organizations from really missing out on hardworking and passionate employees that could change the future of trails. Yeah, thank you so much, Callum, for that. Paola, what do you think? Um, what barriers have you seen for people who are trying to get involved in trails or you know, other young professionals looking to work in this field? Um, and do you have any suggestions for how organizations could overcome them? Yeah, I think to add to what Callum said, um, you know, I am someone who's interested in gaining some field work experience. And um, as I'm browsing open positions, I see most of them are really low pay or um, and don't even offer like, you know, essential benefits like health coverage and like, you know, vision and dental. And it's like, I kind of need those. <laughs> and um, and it's also like, well, now I have to uh, decide between the stability of the job I have right now versus pursuing something I'm really passionate about. And, you know, it, it will stay in the back of my mind if I don't like, you know, you know, I look at, 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 at uh, I look at positions that are outside of uh, California where I live. And I'm like, well, I, you know, like to explore that, but how would I be able to afford the housing on the the pay that it is. Um, and then uh, I think we all have some personal beef with USA jobs. Uh, <laughs> and um, I, I just, it's a little hard sometimes to uh, gear up the motivation to uh, keep applying when it's such a time intensive application. Not only do you have to like rewrite, rewrite your resume to really fit the position, but also do that questionnaire and every aspect that comes with the position. So um, even me, someone who has their PLC certificate, public land for certificate, I still, it's, it's been a year now since I've had it and I have one year left. And so that, that timeline is really pressing me because I'd really like to take advantage of my certificate, but um, I just, you know, lots of factors involved. So um, I guess uh, I, I'm aware that there are some like federal resume writing workshops and stuff like that, but sometimes they're not within the frame. I can't always ask for some time off work. And so being able to uh, sometimes um, uh, uh, have be considerate of people who you know work at eight to five so that they can also have them access to those resources um, and uh, yeah I, I mainly my number one like <laughs> uh, topic was you know overcoming the difficulty of rejection. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, Melissa, what about you? Um, what barriers, barriers have you seen for people who are trying to get involved with trails or um, 
other young professionals looking to work in the field? And do you have any suggestions for how organizations could overcome these? I feel like um, accessibility issues, like was mentioned um, by my previous uh, mates here, like um, in regards to like reimagining what trails are. So like we talked about it in the young people's like um, workshop thing that we had in the in the conference someone said like brought up the issue of reimagining trails from being only like an elitist type of activity to something more accessible for everyone um because most of the time and it, it resonated with me because I used to think that like you know I used to think of camping and things like that but with, along with camping and things like that came like a cost so you need a car you need um to, to at least in New York to get to New York State, like upstate, um, you I need a car to get from the city to to certain um trails. Of course, there's like the Metro North and different areas, but they could take you to like a limited amount of trails. So like imagining how we can um help New York, like New York City people, like lower income people, um, feel welcome and included in the natural national trail system because sometimes it seems super far reaching, um, especially people who do not have the, the knowledge on how to get to these places, maybe organizations can come, um, like the BLM can come to schools like New York City Public High Schools, or elementary schools and organize little workshops to get these kids like um, to become knowledgeable in, in, in these trails, because I didn't know that it took me like I was I'm 24 now, um, and it took me this amount of years to actually know what national trails are. I had no idea what they were, um, but I knew that I loved being outdoors, and I knew I loved nature, and I would like like for kids who also feel the same way to have access to it and feel like it's not something that they can attain um, or get to or experience because of barriers such as like transportation or um, lack of knowledge, and I feel like it has an impact because there's some people who might want to go into like environmental sustainability or other like um, environmental majors or fields, but they don't have the knowledge nor have the experience in these areas. Um, and that's a burden because like they have this passion, but they don't have the tools to get them to that those areas. So I feel like um, it would be cool if like these organizations can come to the city um, and, and educate young people about their work and how... Um, uh, they can be a part of it. Oh, I'm um, sorry, I have one more thing. Um, and also like, uh, it helps too, because there's often certain um, perceptions of nature, um, especially with people of color, like um, some people have limited access to it. Um, and I feel like um, talking about this and making them feel comfortable about these areas can help address these um, preconceptions that they might have or like if they have fears about outdoors or because of lack of um, experience in, in the outdoors like I feel like it could create a, a, a change. Yeah thank you so much Melissa. Um, Mara I'm going to turn to you for the same question. Um, what barriers have you seen for people trying to get involved in trails and do you have any suggestions on how organizations could help overcome these? Um, yeah, so I guess like kind of starting with career stuff, I think um, a lot of organizations have seasonal employment opportunities, but it can sometimes be really hard to find something that's more permanent. And I know for me, like being in a temporary position now, my next job, I would really like to have something that's permanent and just have more job security and also like financial stability that comes with that. Um, I really like to like sign a lease and have the opportunity to renew it and not like have to find a new lease every year or every six months. Um, and then I think uh, kind of more general, there's uh, either, I feel like, I think Helen mentioned this, that entry-level jobs are actually not entry-level. Like the amount of experience they want you to have is like, you know, five years. And it's like, well, I've been in college. Like I haven't, you know, it, obviously college experience can kind of go towards that. But um, five years of professional experience right out of college is like really difficult to accomplish. Um, or kind of on the flip side, I think sometimes, um, the passion and like excitement recent grads can have can be taken advantage of and they're given um like a laundry list of things they need to do and like there's really high expectations but not like proper compensation for everything they're being asked to do in a job 
And then uh, I think another thing that I've kind of encountered with more jobs is sometimes there's a focus on uh, having certain specializations and skills for a job um, rather than, you know, like more focused on the general experience and skills that you've developed uh, and kind of seeing the benefits of just like coming in with a lot of passion and willingness to learn. Um, and for me, I went to a liberal arts school, Bullock College, and was an environmental studies major. So I had like a very inter interdisciplinary education. Um, a lot of times it's sleep, but that's like a whole nother thing. Um, and then also, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought for a second. Um, oh, along with that, like I don't have a communications and marketing background, but I've been able to learn so much on the job, which I see as extremely um valuable and honestly like in some ways maybe uh more beneficial than like communications and marketing you know classes i could have taken in college um and then i think another thing uh kind of just maybe like volunteering for young adults with trails i know this is something we talk about our organization just making that accessible for young people and kind of realizing that they might not have the same um you know time uh available to volunteer so making sure there are opportunities um, that, you know, our weekends or, you know, maybe even evenings and um, things like that. And just like a range of experience, like volunteering experiences that young adults could do, you know, whether it is like uh, kind of the more trail building and maintenance side of things or just being able to like help out with like school programs and leading guided hikes and things like that. And, um, you know, finding ways to just like really share those opportunities that are available um, to young people. I know social media is like a really good way to talk, share about jobs and those volunteer things um and yeah even just like I know sometimes for me like looking for jobs like trying to find like a job website or platform that like has all the jobs listed on it instead of having to look at a bunch of different places um is nice thank you so much for that uh, Lisette, I'm going to come to you with the same question. What barriers have you seen for people who are trying to get involved in the trails field? And do you have any suggestions on how organizations could overcome those? Yeah, so I think, um, I feel like very similar to what my um, other apprentices here have said, just a wide variety of things um, to start. Like I mentioned, like the job search is hard. Usually I find a lot more seasonal and temporary and internships, which is hard. And I know a lot of us cannot afford that. So I feel like jobs sometimes should um, make it easier, I guess, and have that leeway to kind of be on the path of a full-time position. And not only that, but sometimes I think jobs just need to give people a chance. Like I've seen a lot of entry level jobs that are starting to require so many things like 10 years of experience. <laughs> it's just all these crazy um, qualification, not crazy, but qualifications that I feel tend to be um, not real sometimes, especially for people who are graduating with their bachelor's. So that I feel like that really makes it hard for people enter to enter their workforce. And I think people just really, employers need to give potential employees just a chance. Like Mara said, like you could learn so much on the job. You know, you don't have to have the background, but you can learn it on the job. So little things like that. And then also same with what people have said, um, accessibility and language and education. I think there are many times when people are unaware of, you know, careers like this. I mean, I wasn't aware until I went to school about what the National Park Service was. Similar to uh, Melissa's story, I grew up in Chicago and I didn't really get out. <laughs> I didn't really go to the parks or nothing like that, um, you know, because you kind of had this fear instilled in you that the outside is scary. <laughs> the, so to go outside can be dangerous. And um, yeah, I think people need to start off. I feel like if there's a way for like agencies to kind of create that partnership with communities to kind of engage with them and I don't know whether it's virtual or even like do something where you can get buses to bring people out to these uh, national forests and things like that. There's such opportunity to do so. Like, yeah, really having that accessibility and education from an early, 
I guess, early age, you can say earlier on than like in your 20s or 30s or whenever, you know. Um, so I think really being able to bridge that gap and have some sort of engagement with the communities that essentially you're serving in a way. So as public servants. Um, so yeah, I think there, there's, it's hard. Um, there's so many things I wish I can change. I wish I had all the money in the world to give everybody a job, but it's just, yeah, I don't know exactly how to provide that solution, but those just are, are just some takes, I think. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you all so much for that. Um, we have a little bit of conversation going on in the chat, which is awesome. Um, we do have a question, a couple of questions here. Um, so anyone who feels like um, they want to answer, please feel free to jump in. Um, so the first one, how could educational programs improve to enhance field experiences and focus less on theory? Um, the second part of the question, what experiences outside of your traditional studies create the most impactful, valuable experiences that you can draw upon in your professional pathway? Yeah, Melissa, we'll go to you first and then Carly. I feel like, um, let me just go back to the question to answer it. Uh, let me. Um, the first time like that I went to an ed educational program related to environmental like topics was when I went to study abroad in Costa Rica at in college um, and we were able to hike a trail over there and it was like one of the, the first times that I was able to get into um, a, a forest and like touch the trees smell the you know the rain and like you know just engage with the natural world and we had like uh people like trail guides explaining to us what they were it was like the first time I saw animals on a trail and that was in college <laughs> um and it meant so much because like you can only learn so much from theoretical knowledge but it's different when you're there in person touching and feeling and it like triggers other stuff in your brain you know like that makes you think differently about an issue so like it just got me really more it got me more motivated to engage in, in like an environmental sustainability and I I saw firsthand from also like talking to the people about why their land was so important to them and why the reasons why they were fighting for it stuff that you can't really read on in the textbook because it's not it's sometimes brushed over um, and, and you don't get to experience that human connection from a textbook. You can learn about it, but you don't really learn that, that aspect of it. So I feel like that's what, um, in-person programs can do to people, especially people who don't have accessibility to those areas. Um, and to do... And those are, that was the impactful um, experience that I've had. Um, and educational programs like that um, help people, like I said, like make that connection that they might not be able to get from a textbook because you're being put out there in the field and learning more about it by like through your senses and all of that. I feel like that's the most impactful for me. I hope it helped. <laughs> Thank you so much, Melissa. Carly, what do you think? Yeah, I wanted to add um, to the what experiences outside of our traditional studies create the most impactful and valuable experiences. Um, I recently learned the power of attending conferences and how much fun they are to be able when these conferences are created around specific subjects. Um, I most recently went to the National Tribal Leaders Climate Change Summit in um, Spokane, Washington a couple of weeks ago, and it was specifically like a gathering to share about what tribal co-management things are happening out in different tribal nations. Um, and I feel like I never, after graduating, I've never had um, like intentional time set apart for learning because in my job, it's just like, you got to get things done for the day. You got to keep things going, that there's not a lot of time or intention set to keep young professionals learning. Um, and I think that is something that is really valuable for me because um, as I'm starting to get into these new spaces, I don't have time to just like go to a class to teach me all of this. And I have to either seek it out for myself or um, 
or like uh, go to the internet or like connect with people. But like, if I'm starting from square one, like finding people to connect with is really scary. And so going to these conferences where people go with the intent on meeting other people, not only helps me to like connect with people who I can learn more information from, but there's like set programming that is designed to teach and to educate and to give you additional materials to learn from. And so, um, providing your young uh, like like people in your organizations opportunities to go to like help them pay for their registration or to get to these different locations um, and help find them because I think a lot of the times I've seen in my work it's like okay you have to find these opportunities and like I could go to the internet but I feel like so many of these happen annually that it's cool to receive that like from like a supervisor saying hey like we know this conference happens every year and we know you are interested in learning. Let's send you. So like taking the initiative because sometimes asking for it can be really intimidating, um, especially when like, I know it's good to be an advocate for yourself, but like sometimes it's nice for people to just care for your self-development and learning that they offer you opportunities for you to do that. Um, so I'd say that. Um, Lizette, your turn. Thanks, Carly. Both Melissa and Carly had great answers. Um, and I, yeah, I was going to say similar to Melissa, um, those educational programs or experiences really, it's one thing to be on book and paper and it's another thing to really get out there. Um, my current position is with the Field Museum in Chicago. And what I help out with is ed environmental educational programs. Wait, did I say that right? Environmental education, yeah, programs. Um, and taking out like kids of color into the outdoors, I can just see how they light up and see things that they never thought they'd see before, like an acorn, you know? And whether they're that young or even um, seeing my siblings Oh, I recently did an internship in Alaska and my siblings went with me and they were so surprised to see a glacier and they're in their 30s. So whatever age, that impact is still going to be there. And really having these educational programs beyond your traditional studies and your traditional textbook knowledge and theories um, really just provides that opportunity for people to I guess, be immersed and possibly ignite a fire in kids or adults. And I think that really helps. I don't know. It's just very helpful to have educational programs. It really improves a lot. And to be able to touch all these things and smell and see everything, all those sensory um, opportunities, it really just, I feel like, is amazing. I don't know if I'm answering the question correctly. But yeah, I just thought what Melissa said was really good. And I just kind of wanted to, I guess, bring a more personal, intimate story to it. Yeah, that was great. Thank you so much, Lisette. Um, Anyone else have any um, comments on this or any other final um, words you want to share with everyone as well? All right, awesome. Give me one second. All right, so I do wanna to say to everyone in the audience, um, if you want to get in contact with any of the um, apprentices, please just send me an email and let me know and I'm happy to share their contact information with you, so. Um, you can further connect. And I know they're all really um, appreciative that you all attended today to hear from them. Um, yeah, and it's just a special thank you again to the 2022 Trail Apprentices for taking part in this and for participating in the program since the fall. It's been really, really wonderful learning alongside you and, and having you in the program at PNTS. Um, before we end for today, I kindly ask that you scan the QR code on the screen just to take a very brief feedback survey about today's session. And while you do that, I do want to quickly mention um, to please mark your calendars for February 12th through 17th um, for Hike the Hill 2023. It's returning in person to Washington, D.C., celebrating its 26th year 
Hike the Hill is a joint effort between American Hiking Society and Partnership for the National Trail System. It brings together the trails community to advance shared trail priorities with congressional and federal agency leaders um, on topics including trails funding, public lands management, conservation, equitable access, and other top priorities for trails and public lands. And you can visit um, pnts.org slash new um, and then hike the hill to learn more about it. Um, you will be receiving a follow-up email with the link to the re recording. Um, and I will include the apprentices contact information in that um, email as well. Um, please follow PNTS on social media. And thank you again to our wonderful trail apprentices and to everyone who attended today. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.